Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. And today we'll be looking at an important question. And this question is, can we possibly stop state-sponsored hackers from going after our devices? What if a state-sponsored hacker is trying to break into your mobile device, whether you're an iPhone or whether you're an Android devices, whether you're on Linux or Windows computer? If someone who is paid every day to go after your devices, is there any possibility for us to stop them from getting into your devices, ultimately getting into your accounts. Think about some of your important accounts, your bank accounts, your identity, your residential information, your credit card, and so on. So all these are critical accounts that you're running. And not only can they gain access to those accounts, they could possibly utilize your accounts and launch hacking campaigns against other users. So this, are, this is a very critical question that you get asked all the time, especially when you're in security consulting, when you are trying to give advisory to some of the largest companies in the world. So the first question that they will ask when you meet a chief information officer, when you meet a chief information security officer is, how do you stop state-sponsored hackers? And I want to zoom out a little more and think about the whole cyber attack chain. Think about the MITRE attack framework. And you really want to gain a perspective of how the hackers do it. And this is going to be a lecture about thinking how the hackers do it. So if you can visualize in your mind how the hackers are able to launch their attacks, all right, they are, again, I want to highlight a key point, is that they are paid every day to go after your systems, to go after your devices. So they're very patient, and at the same time, they're very, very smart. All right, you have to build zero-day exploits and so on. Those are really tough to build, all right? And I know I don't cover them in this channel because if I do that, it is going to be highly scalable and a lot of people would just copy and paste those exploits and that would gain access into a lot of systems and that could get a lot of us into trouble, all right? So no zero-day exploits in this channel, okay? Else the whole channel could even get deleted. So the next thing, you know, going back to the question is zooming out into the cyber attack chain. So the cyber attack chain details down the step-by-step -step process that the hackers will have to go through in order to complete the entire attack, in order to gain unauthorized access to the systems. So with that in mind, what we want to do is to think about the defenses that we have. All right, how can we set up defenses to be able to stop those attacks at different parts and different phases? So perhaps the hackers are doing information gathering, so that they could launch their phishing campaign by sending fake emails to the user. So in those cases, you perhaps need to be able to ensure that your sensitive data, your employees' information, your contact details, and so on are not exposed. And of course, as a consumer, all right, are you putting your date of birth? Are you putting your identity information on your own social media profiles or your own social media accounts? So again, those are key questions that you want to think about. And at the same time, all right, then the next phase is as the hacker launch those hacking campaigns against you. So if they were to send you a, an email, all right, perhaps you are subscribed to some of the internet services like Netflix, YouTube Premium, Spotify, all right, whichever the case is. As you subscribe to them, they could send you an email and that email tells you, hey, there is an unauthorized transaction on your account and we need you to click this link. All right, we need you to open up this document. Wouldn't that, all right, entice us to click onto those documents or links. All right, so they're trying to increase the probability of us falling prey, all right, becoming victims of their phishing campaigns. So that is exactly what they will do in those situations. So with that, we will need a lot of awareness, a lot of education, a lot of training to ensure the users do not click onto those links, do not open up those documents. Or the best case would be, they would even be able to just quickly delete away those emails. So that is again the best approach by educating the users, educating the community as a whole so that they learn about identifying those fake emails. Then next up, what about the zero day vulnerabilities? In fact, the, statistically, 99% of attacks are because of unpatched systems. So systems that have not received updates. So whenever you get an update onto your mobile device, onto your Windows computer, onto your Macintosh, onto your Linux servers, quickly update those because those updates come with a lot of security patches that can help harden your system and make it significantly harder for the hackers to break in. All right, so if you look at all the high profile attacks that have been happening across the whole world, a lot of times they are taking advantage of unpatched systems. So you definitely want to be able to update 
your devices. The moment you get those updates, you want to test them quickly, all right, into say a, a test environment, all right, before you perhaps roll them out into the production system. So again, there are many, many different ways, approaches and methods that you can utilize as part of your patching program. And then ultimately, if the hackers are in your environment, are you able to detect it? Are you able to say that, hey, I saw some indicators compromise, there's an indicator of attack. Do you have those detection mechanisms to help you detect them, whether you have your systems on-premises or whether you're on multiple clouds or you're on hybrid cloud model, are you able to detect those attacks as they come in? And ultimately, towards the end of the whole attack chain, it's about incident response. So even giant companies who have spent hundreds of millions every, every year on cybersecurity, on prevention and detection, they still got compromised. They still got hacked into. Then the question is, what exactly can we do, right? So this is a big focus now in the industry called incident response. So as the incidents happen and occur, despite the very best effort that you have done in prevention and detection, the hacks do go through. So now that the hacks have gone through, what specific steps do we take to respond to those attacks? Meaning, if there's a ransomware outbreak, what is your playbook? What is your runbook? All right, what, is, what are the step-by-step -step instructions that you have for your employees, for the affected users, for the IT team, for the security team? And how are you going to contain the attack so the ransomware does not spread over to multiple computers or, or even spreading to your servers? And hackers who have access through a ransomware into your devices do not have access also to the administrator password, all right, or even to the user account, username and password, those could be utilized to gain access into the system. On management plan that you put in place in order to be able to effectively and efficiently respond to different types of threats, all right, so ransomware is going to be very different from a SQL injection. A ransomware is going to be very different from a phishing attack. Very important and critical, all right, to identify at which stage are the hacks happening? Having multiple layers, all right, multiple layers of security in place so that you can slow down the hackers as much as possible, making it significantly harder for them to break into your devices. So once again, I hope you've learned something valuable in today's lecture. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.